I'm Michael Killen. My next guest is a man who has helped build Palo Alto, and he is Jim Fear. In a moment, he'll be sitting here, and I'll be asking him a series of questions of how it, a developer thinks. Hi, what we're looking at right now is a early version of a 24-foot painting I am making, and it actually has the piece in it that deals in part with water treatment. And the painting is called Sustainability. And I am making this painting, and I, have, I plan to have it ready by Earth Day. And I make this painting to lend out, sell, rent, whatever, to organizations that are trying to gain attention to the messages that they are sending out to the world about sustainability. Jim. Hey, Michael. You look great, and thank you for coming on the show. How are you today? I'm good. Jim, you're a developer. Is that right? I'm two things, a developer, and I'm also a consultant to developers. And there's a difference. I'm an advisor to people who are developers, and that means they own the land and make all the decisions. So a lot of what I do is advise good quality developers. Good. And I imagine you can effectively advise these developers, and as well as you know, be a developer yourself, because I believe you have built a lot of buildings in Palo Alto. Yeah, and some of those are as advisors as well, but, it, but to give some gravity to it, it's probably been between 100 and 125 projects in Palo Alto. You have been involved in a 125 buildings? Somewhere between 100 and 125. Now, a lot of that is the consultant. So if someone building 25 homes wants help with the Palo Alto process, they will hire me, and I'll be intimately involved through the approvals with the city. Then they build the homes. OK. And have many of these buildings been built downtown? Oh, probably 35 or 40 of the downtown buildings. Uh, and certainly 35 or 40 if we include California Avenue. Yeah. You know, that's an amazing contribution to uh, the Palo Alto community. Uh, when our taste is right on, it is a very fine contribution. And if we miss by a little bit, we try to make up for it in renovation or on a second building. Really? By the way, I would never expect you to say if our taste is right on. You, you actually, I mean, it's almost like an artistic thing, aesthetic thing. You're really concerned with the quality of the building. Uh, I, I don't just mean whether it holds up, but how it fits in and how it enhances the community. Sure, and I'm, I'm going to uh, describe two ways in which that takes place. You want to build a building where you have in mind who would use this. Otherwise, you're faced with some problems with vacancy or, or it doesn't have a long a longevity because it wasn't you didn't have a user in mind that would be appropriate in the marketplace of downtown Palo Alto. And the other is Palo Alto is rigorous with its architecture design standards. I do not come from any architectural background. Um, and we've built probably a dozen award-winning design buildings. And um, I'm enjoying the process of being involved with very fine architects as those happen. And I'm not entirely hands off. Um, but it's really a team effort that includes the city architects, and I have some role. All right. I have some photos of several buildings that you have built. And would you tell us which, what building that is? And I know that building very well. I've been in it many, many times. Yes, that's a building known as 250 University and, and known as Plaza Ramona, designed by Tom Gilman at, Des at DES Architects and Engineers. Um, and that was built. 89-90 kind of time frame. And it was one of the first complex zoning approvals called a planned community zone in the downtown since the ordinances were changed in 1986. And it, not only is it a good looking building, it provides a lot of connectivity yeah. between Hamilton and City Hall and University Avenue. Yeah, it is a lovely building. Uh, let's take a look at another one. 
I know this building also. In fact, it's near the studio in Palo Alto where we are taping the show. This is the Campus for Jewish Life, um, approved two and a half or three years ago at great um, uh, effort by the Jewish community and others in the community. And it, was a, and it was a great honor to be able to be involved with this, and I want to tell one little funny story. I can't let you do it. All right. I want to ask you, as they bring up the next photo, what drives you to try to give Palo Alto the best buildings? Well, it is that, and, and my work has been dedicated entirely to Palo Alto, except for a couple that were done outside of Palo Alto during the dot-com boom. But no, it's really been that this is where I live and walk, and, and I take pride in the connectivity of buildings and the building of pub public policy. And I'll, I want to thank um, the law firm that I first worked for. was a small law firm, 12 or 13 lawyers, um, starting in 1978. And... It was a firm of many people, all, everyone was involved with good deeds. Natural Resource Defense Council, City of Palo Alto Politics, City of Palo Alto Commissions and, and Boards, and um, uh, Gene McCown and Larry Klein, both of whom served on the City Council, Larry's still on the City Council, said to me that, and I was given a lot of the real estate work to do as a young lawyer, um, and they said to me, you know, if real estate is done right, it can be an extension of public policy. And that really altered my career path. All right. You have done it. And, and I want to thank you. You've been a wonderful guest. Thank you very much, Michael. Okay. I'll tell you what we got. <laughs>